Hey, what's up Spartans? Welcome back to another video. So now the flight test has ended for Halo Infinite. We just got to wait for the official release and we only have two months so left for, you know, Halo Infinite to release uh, on December the 8th, uh, this fall. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about Halo Infinite's B2B on what I think about it so far, the things that I like about it and what I don't like about it. Uh, maybe the things that, you know, they could improve, you know, something, something, you know, they could add. Uh, if you guys are new here, be sure to like that button and subscribe for more Halo content. So stay tuned throughout the video. Now, let's start off with the good stuff for B2B, and then we can start off with the negative stuff. Uh, so B2B in Halo Infinite is possibly the best version I've ever played in the Halo franchise. It's a 12v12 battle, uh, absolutely epic. I had so much fun playing this uh, with my buddies, and the, and the B2B map that we played in the flight test was called Fragmentation. Now, this map gives me a lot of vibes from Halo Combat Evolved, the, you know, uh, the map called Affinity in the multiplayer. Uh, it's a beautiful looking map and it also reminds me a bit of uh, Halo 3 Valhalla uh, where you boost yourself uh, on the man cannon for, uh, from the beam structure. Uh, that's what they have here. Uh, people that really nail the art style for the uh, foreigner beam structure structures in this game, uh, to me it looks better than, than the ones we've seen in Halo 3. And Halo 3 had iconic foreigner structures, right? But this one, I feel like people that really went all in this uh, for this one, uh, you can tell by the passion and the dedication uh, you know, Tifu has put into this, uh, like in one of the areas in the hallway, uh, it really uh, has, it really reminds me of the Halo C, Halo Combined Ball uh, uh, Assault Control Room, as you guys can see here. Uh, it looks so remarkable, uh, and you know, I'm just so happy that all taking ideas from you know, from uh, Halo Combat Evolve and, and Halo 3 uh, and Behemoth as well. This map again looks so beautiful. Uh, it really reminds me of uh, Relic and and then a Sand Trap as well. You know, I don't know, both maps will do. Uh, they look they look really beautiful. I really can't wait to see what other maps they have in store for us. Uh, and what I, what I love about playing on Fragmentation so far is that you're not going to have bad spawns. Uh, so like in the previous games, whenever you spawn in, you know, there's a chance, you know, you can spawn next to an enemy. Uh, but that doesn't happen to you in, in Halo Infinite. It's not common. So I guess you could say Tifu have really nailed the spawns, you know, at least for this map so far. But even all the 4v4 maps like Bazaar and Recharge and Behemoth, like, I don't always have bad spawns, you know, uh, like Halo C had gigantic maps, right? But players were always, you know, still, you know, uh, spawn killing me, like they're always like around me. Like, I don't know, I always had that kind of issue in the previous games. Um, so I guess Tifty has find a way, you know, uh, to solve that. And, and if every map is like this, you know, the same way, you know, the same thing in, in Infinite, Thank God for that, you know, it's a, it's a relief. I love this uh, feature they've added on Fragmentation where you have to insert your personal AI to open up this door. Uh, it takes uh, like a minute uh, for you to open up the door and in there there are like power, uh, power up weapons that you can find like the skewer, the sniper and, and the heat wave. Uh, and the door design, okay, I know I might sound like it, as if I'm exaggerating, uh, but dude, the, the door design, they really, it really gives me a lot of vibes from Halo 3 the mission called the arc uh, look at the comparison yeah it, like it looks so astonishing i'm so happy like the way the art style looks in this game in general they've done an amazing job honestly this is what halo 4 and 5 were missing all this time they finally got it right uh, anyways but yeah it's a very cool future uh, how they added this on how you can open up this door manually uh, it can be intense because you you gotta you know stay alive for this door to open right and you have uh, enemies approaching you uh, like i wonder if the other b2b maps would have uh, something like this like imagine activating a bridge instead of a door on another B2B map to get across uh, to the other side. Uh, just think of a Halo Combat Evolved, the second mission where you activate the bridge for the very first time. What would be cool to get something like that? Uh, or what about having an elevator where you, if you want to get get up to top uh, sniper tower or whatever, uh, and it's very high up, but you need to use the elevator. Uh, and it would take a while for you to activate it. So so there's possibilities, uh, you know, you know, could, you know, like, can add like like I can see them you know doing something like this. Now there are uh, three game modes they've added for this flight test, which is B2B Team Slayer, B2B CTF, and then we have a new game mode called B2B uh, Total Control. Now this game mode I really had fun playing. But it can be tough, it can be sweaty, uh, but it's absolutely fun playing. So as a team, you really need to focus on all the objectives. And when it comes to communi and when it comes to communications, you know, with your team, because how this uh, game mode works is like it's like territories. Think of that, uh, but it plays differently. So how you play this game mode is that you have to capture all three objectives uh, together to score a point. You can't complete one objective. It doesn't work like that. Not in this game. Uh, it needs to be all three of them. So it has to be a 
Uh, it has to be B, it has to be C, all three of them. I, I like this idea because it doesn't make players stay on, stay on the same objective uh, and camp throughout the match. You know, it's not fun and it can get very repetitive. Uh, so this game mode will make players move around the map often and actually take an action and not being lazy and, you know, staying, staying in the same spot every time. And what I like about CTF is that you know they made uh, made it quite challenging. So if your team scored for the for the very first time in CTF, the enemy flag the enemy flag will spawn in a different place this time, which will be which could be harder for the winning team to get the flag again. Okay, let's start off with the negative stuff. Now there are a few things that I want to point out in B two B, and most people are not really happy with. So I'm sure you guys you know are aware by now. Uh, that there's no BR sauce for B2B uh, and hey for me I'm okay with that no BR sauce like I don't mind having you know you know playing with the uh, you know starting off with the AR and, and the pistol you know the sidekick I personally don't have, have a problem finding a pre precision weapon on the map uh, but it would be nice if the, if the uh, you know, we're, we're to also add the BR star, right? You know, like, like give us give us an option, you know, not replacement. I mean, Halo 2 and 3 had this, uh, so why remove something that players had fun playing with, you know? So do please bring that back. Uh, bring back BR stars. Uh, no one ever had a problem with it, you know? If, if people really loved it in Halo 2 and 3, they should definitely, you know, bring it back in Halo Infinite. So next up we have is no announcer. So Jeff Steinser won't be in B2B. Again, I don't know why TF3 T43 removed him from B2B. He was so iconic in every Halo game. No one asked for this, uh, you know, like no one asked for him to, to remove, like to remove him. So, you know, bring him back and, and bring him back in, into B2B. Like I want to hear him say, flag, drop, flag, taken. Like, like I want to, like, why would you remove him from B2B? Like, like, come on, like, don't get me wrong. The AI voice, you know, uh, I don't mind having the AI voice. I really don't, you know, uh, but come on, you can't remove it's Jeff Steinzer, man. That, that is just so wrong. <laughs> Another problem we have for this game is the vehicles. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the feel of the vehicles when you know when I drive them. But when it comes to to the vehicles like the Warthog, I feel like it's too what's his name? It's too bouncy whenever you drive it. So whenever I get bumped into a wall or or a rock, the Warthog would just flip over. You know, right right away. Even when I'm driving slow, you know, this happens a lot. I feel like the vehicle needs to be you know it needs to feel it needs to be heavy. Does that make sense? So it doesn't bounce too much. Uh, and also the ghost, I feel like the ghost is, is stupidly OP. It's like Halo CE all over again, where you would tap a player with the ghost and the player would just die, would just die right away. You don't even need to use a boost uh, to kill an enemy player. It's that OP. So I hope TF3 you know, does more work on these vehicles, uh, you know, to give them tweaks. Another thing they need to uh, address is the Pelican dropping vehicles. I feel like the Pelican drops uh, in the Ghost literally like every time. Uh, like we didn't see the Tank, the Wraith, the Banshee and the Wasp, but you know, uh, most of the time it's not that common. Uh, it seems like the Pelican has always been dropping off the Ghost. Uh, and also the Pelican should at least drop off vehicles somewhere safer instead of like dropping vehicles out in the open, you know, where you would have enemies firing their weapons at you. Uh, we, we didn't see vehicles like the Chopper, you know, Wraith or the Razorback. I guess they're not in the part of this flight test. Uh, but yeah, we didn't see the other vehicles like, uh, vehicles like the Tank, you know, the Wasp, you know, the Banshee. I hardly, I hardly saw them, you know. I, I've, I've only used the Wasp literally only once, but it was quite hard for me to get. Okay, guys, I think that's it for today's video. I think I said uh, enough today's video. I, I probably must have missed that, uh, you know, a lot of things. I do apologize if I did. Uh, but yeah, if you guys really enjoyed this video, please do smack that like button and subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitch. I literally stream Halo there every day. Uh, just let me know what you guys think about the, about the flight test. Did you guys enjoy the flight test? You know, were you guys, you know, are you guys still, are you guys still feeling skeptical about Halo Infinite? Uh, we'd love to uh, hear your thoughts on it. Uh, and I'll see you Spartans in the next video. Bye.